Welcome back everyone. Uh, in today's video we're going to be going over um, spawning monsters. Uh, in this video we have a little player here that, um, what's his face? Uh, he's just a player that's moving around. He's a block of black. Um, and that's it. So we just have a player that moves. It's very simple. It's nothing complex. This obviously has a lot of bugs, but that's okay. Um, it's just to have a player that moves. And the main idea is we're going to have our monster that just follows our player. So in our script, we have um, a script that gets our player, and then we just move towards that player. Um, and then we're going to move and slide as long as the position is greater than 10. Um, all right, um, we're going to be adding some variables later on, or you can add some variables. I've added speed and damage. However, I haven't put any of them in, as you can see, but we're going to edit in a sense. So in our main, um, I've added a timer into our main world, and I've added a node to you where I'm going to be adding our monsters to. So this is going to be the container for our monsters, essentially. So in our player, this isn't optimal. In fact, you don't want to do this, but I'm going to be spawning them from our player. So I've connected the timer to our player. So every time the timer goes off, I'm going to create the temp monster by instantiating it, right? So the monster dot instantiate because we preloaded it up here and we're going to add it. So we're going to add it to the node 2D, which is the container right here. Okay, um, so now if I play again, if I go to my remote, every one second you will see a new monster being spawned. However, the monster is being spawned on the same on that on that bleh, on this position, right? So let's say I want to spawn the monsters around my player. Well, if I want to spawn, if I want to change the position of uh, the monster to be around our player, it's actually very simple. We would just have to change that position by by calling the temp monster dot position. And just to, uh, I'll, I'll explain this and then we'll go through something else. Um, say self dot position plus vector two. And we'll say, um, what we'll do is we'll have Randy, uh, we'll do Randy range. Randy means random uh, integer. Um, so if you do rand f range, that'll be random float. Um, but in this case, we want a random integer. So we'll do, a random integer from negative 100 to 100. And then same thing here. So negative 100 to 100. So we're gonna get a random number between negative 100 and 100. And then same thing for that Y value. And then we're gonna set that position around it, right? So now if I play, it'll now spawn it or not. What did I do? I spelled position wrong. Um, position. Yeah. So now it'll spawn it around our player, no matter where I am. Sometimes, obviously, um, the position will be might be on our player. Obviously, the game is smart and it won't spawn it on top of our player, but that's okay. Um, in the, in those cases, you can check if the position is on top of the player or, or whatever. Um, but we're not going to go over that. That's just to edit the position. So in general, this this is a rule in general when you spawn something, you can always edit anything inside of that thing. So to kind of give more explanation on that. In our monster, we have speed, right? So let's let's edit this. So the velocity will be time speed now. We can edit the speed by saying temp monster dot speed equals, let's say one for now, that's really slow. So one, what is going on here? Ah, so speed, we have to set it to something. <laughs> so we'll set these to zero. Yeah, we'll set it, we'll try that now. Okay, there we go. And as you can see, they're moving much slower. Um, now let's just randomize this a little bit by doing the same thing. We'll do random range, um, except we will do, we'll do from one to, let's do 20. That's very fast. So now it'll spawn something very, either very fast or very slow. So now you can see some of them are very slow. And they are kind of going at different speeds. So you can see, that one is going a bit faster than some of the other ones, right? And that's it. So that's how we kind of randomize the speed, basically. Uh, and this go again, this goes for anything I want to edit. So I can always edit the damage, right? So I can say damage equals 10. And let's, now I won't do anything, but this allows us to print out the damage, right? So in fact, what I can do is I can add a ready function, ready function here, and then we'll print the damage. Right, because this gets changed on on the ready because it, it before we've even added it 
we've changed the damage. So let's try it. And it'll print out the damage every time. So it'll print 10, 10, 10. In fact, if we randomize it, let's randomize it between 1 and 20 again. I think I have to reload. It'll now print a random number. So now you can see that the damage varies, right? So if you want to randomize a damage on a monster or something like that, this is not a bad way to do it. Um, yeah, and so that we kind of randomize a bunch of different things. You can also do, so just for the sake of you know, doing this one more time, you can change any of the values in here as well. So in our in our actual monster, we can go to visibility, for example. We'll go to modulate and let's modulate our guy. So let's say, whoops, let's say modulate equals um I forget the color. Let's see. Uh go to modulate a copy of value. Okay, let's see. I think it's color. Uh, I think I can just do this actually. Let's try that. Although I don't think that'll work. No. Okay. Ignore that. Never mind. I forgot. How, I forgot how to change the modulate, but you can do that. Um, I just forgot, and I'm not gonna try to look it up right now. So. You can change the modulate by calling the modulate, right? So there's a lot of different things you can change. You can change position, rotation, whatever, right? So that's the power of building something in time, in like real time, right? Um, let's, last thing we're gonna do in this video, let's create a spawner that only spawns things in this area if it's true. So let's take this out. We don't need this anymore. We're not gonna use our timer. Let's delete it, in fact. And let's go into our spawner. So our, I've connected my spawner and body entered. Let's connect it body exit as well. So in here, what we're gonna do is say, um, ooh, never mind. Actually, we're gonna actually add our timer again. I lied. Ah, we're gonna connect that as well. Um, we're gonna make sure it's on auto start. And in here, now we're gonna add a new variable called spawn monster. And we're going to make it equal to false by default. So now I'm going to copy paste this again. Um, in our position, all we're going to do is instead of self, we're actually going to make it around the um, spawner. So we're going to get the node of our spawner, which I'm just going to drag in. There we go. Um, so we're going to get node.spawner and we're going to uh, set the position. We're not going to actually make it random. We're just going to set it at the exact center of it. Um, the speed will randomize, damage doesn't matter. Um, but now what we can do is we can take our spawner and say spawner equals false if we exit, but also spawner equals true if we enter. And what we'll do in our timeout, we'll check if that's true. So we'll check if this spawn timer is true. If it is, right, true, not false, then we'll sp start spawning things, right? So let's try that. So I'm not inside, but if I enter, it'll start spawning it because um, it's actually going to be spawning at the wrong place because the position is over there. So let's um, let's take this and set the transform to zero, zero. Okay, let's restart. Oh yeah, here we go. So now it'll start spawning inside of it. Only if I'm inside of it though. So if I'm not inside of it, it won't spawn. And there you go. That's how we create a spawner with a area detection now. So we can actually make it bigger just to test it one more time. Let's go. So here we go. I'm inside of the area, but if I exit, it'll start stop spawning. As you can see, it stops spawning, or unless I enter. And that's it. So that's the basic concept behind spawning monsters. Um, you can change a bunch of different values. It's a, this is a very basic video, um, but I hope you learned something. I hope if you're learning Godot that, that this was helpful. Um, if not, uh, give me a request down below in the comments below, and I will do my best to get to you. Um, I have a bunch of tutorials out already. So definitely check those out. Um, if you are checking out this video and it is the day of the upload, um, tomorrow on November, here we go, November 11th, I will be streaming on Twitch. Um, I'm going to be doing a collab with another YouTuber, which will be pretty fun. Um, we're going to be doing a week long journey kind of, and we're going to be documenting it a bit of it on Twitch. Um, so that'll be fun. So check that out. Go sub to my Twitch. Um, join my Discord for any updates on that, um, but it'll be fun. I think it'll be very cool. Um, I will give you context. It's going to be kind of a Unity versus Godot thing, which will be very interesting. So 
go check that out. Uh, I'm going to probably do an announcement or two on either YouTube or Discord. So definitely check that out. Go sub to my Twitch. Um, but I'll be on Twitch and I'll be on Discord. Those are the main two things that I'll kind of update on. Um, definitely check that out. If you're not interested, that's okay. Um, I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.